Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. Last video I have explained you about uh, sequencing problems. The meaning of sequencing problems and then what are the assumptions on which the technique is based and uh, the uh, meaning of some terms which are used in this sequencing problems. All these things I have already explained in the last video. So if you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject operations management, select the videos of job sequencing, be perfect about the concept, about the meaning. In this video, I'm going to explain you the procedure of solving a sequencing problem. So different types of sequencing problems are there that just like uh, N jobs and two machines and uh, N jobs and three machines. Most commonly, these two types of problems will be asked in examination. So in this video, I'm going to explain you the procedure to be followed in solving the sequencing problem. So before explaining the procedure, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. Now, the first type of problems, model of problem is processing of N jobs and two machines. So imagine if the decision maker is having N jobs, one, two, three, four, up to N jobs, but he is having only two machines. So we want to find out what is the sequence of completing all the N jobs on two machines so that the total elapsed time should be minimum. That is the objective. So what is the procedure here? The simplest possible sequencing decision problem is that of N jobs and two machines, sequencing problems, wherein we want to determine the sequence in which the N jobs should be processed through two machines so as to minimize the total elapsed time. So first of all, be clear the concept regarding N jobs and two machines. So we are concerned in finding out what is the order or what is the sequence of completing all the end jobs the ultimate objective to complete all the jobs in the minimum possible time now this can be completely described as follows now what is the model of the problem there are only two machines a and b imagine we have only two machines a and b each job is processed in the order a to b that means every job the processing first should be done on a then only it can pass on to B. That means directly we cannot uh, I mean process on B machine. First the work should be done on A machine, then only the work can be done on the B machine. That is the order of processing. The expected processing time A1, A2, A3, A4 up to AN and B1, B2, B3, B4 up to BN are known as given below. The requirement of this problem is we are given N jobs we are given two machines and we are given the time, estimated time for each job on each machine. For example, job number one. Job number one, A1, is the time required on A machine and B1 is the time required on B machine. Similarly, for doing second job, A2 is the time on A machine, B2 is the time on B machine. Like that, we are given the time, estimated time of each job on each of the machines. Now, the procedure for the solution of the above problem was developed by Johnson and Bellman. So these are the persons who has propounded the method, who has developed the method of finding out to the optimum sequence and which involves the following steps. Step by step, you have to understand. Once if you listen, if you watch this video, then it will be easier for you to solve the problem. Directly, if you go to the problem, so mechanically, you can be able to understand. So, so theory, this concept is very, very important. Watch this video one and two, two times, then you go for problems. It will be beneficial for you. You can be able to remember, understand much better. Step one, select the smallest processing time occurring in the list A1, A2, A3 up to AN and B1, B2, B3, B4 up to BN. So what is the first step to solve the sequencing problem? Find out the smallest time 
among A machine and also among B machine. Find out. The smallest time may happen in A machine or it may happen in B machine, any of the machine. So your job is to find out what is the smallest time in machine A and machine B. If there is a time, select either of the smallest processing, processing time. If the same number is there in A machine as well as B machine, it is called time. So if there is a time, select any one of the smallest time. Step 2. If the smallest processing time is AR, that means in the machine A earth job. So do the earth job first and place it in the beginning of the sequence. Suppose there are 10 jobs, 1, 2, 3, 4, like that, up to 10 jobs. So we are given A1, A2, A3, up to A10. So if the smallest time is A7, A7, in a 7th job on A machine, then 7th job should be placed in the first cell, cell, first cell. That means if you put the cells for 10 jobs, in the first cell, we we'll write down. For example, I will show you. Suppose 10 jobs are there. We will put the cells like this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 boxes are there. 10 cells. If the smallest time is in A machine and 7th job. The so 7th job should be placed in the first cell. That means you have to do 7th job first. In the sequence then if the if it is B's suppose if the smallest time happen to be in B machine then find out which job it is the smallest time suppose the second second job we have the smallest time on B machine then select the second job to the last one that means if the smallest time is on A machine, assign in the left hand side. If the smallest time is on the B machine, assign it on the right side. Then if there is a tie for minimum among B's, then do any of these jobs in the last cell. If there is a tie in the B, B machine, suppose for second machine 10 hours, ninth machine also 10 hours. So second machine 10 hours, ninth machine 10 hours, there is a tie on B machine. So you can do any of the job, either, either second or nine, and put it to the right side. Put it to the right side. Right? So these three or now. Third step. There are now n minus 1 left jobs. Suppose here two jobs are assigned. So after making the assignment of two jobs, remaining eight jobs are left. Then jobs left to be ordered. Repeat the steps one and two to the reduced set of processing. After completing, after assigning these two jobs, repeat the same steps of step number one, step number two, step number one and step number two. Whatever we have done in the initial sequencing, the same steps you have to follow for the remaining of the jobs. Means if the smallest time is on A machine, assign from left. If the smallest time on B machine, assign from the right. This procedure you have to repeat again and again. So times. The processing times of both the machines corresponding to jobs already assigned. Now fourth step. Continue the process placing the jobs next to first or next to last and so on till all the jobs have been assigned a position in what is called optimum sequence. The same steps you have to follow. Then after assigning all the jobs, we will definitely get an optimum sequence. We'll get an optimum sequence. Then last step is after finding out optimum sequence as stated above, we can find out the overall time. That means total elapsed time we can find out. The total elapsed time means the time from beginning of the first job and ending of the last job. So beginning from first job and ending of the last job, the time is called total lapse time. And we can also find out the idle time of machine one and machine two during this complete total elapsed time. That's all, these are the five steps to be followed when we are having N jobs and only 
two machines. Now one more model of problems are processing through n jobs and three machines. Earlier it was two machines. Now so a new type of model of problems are there where we have three machines. A, B, C. Then what is the procedure? The uh, first procedure what I have explained is for two machines. Now it is three machines. This type of sequencing problem is completely described as follows. How the problem will be here. The first step only three machines A, B, C are involved. A, B, C. Three machines and N jobs. And each job is processed in the prescribed order. The order is first the work has to be done on A machine, then B machine, then C machine. We cannot, this, we cannot change this rule for any of the job. All the jobs processing should be done in the same order. First A, then B, then C. Then no passing of jobs is permitted. The same order over each machine is maintained. There should not be any job which should violate this rule. What is the rule? A machine, then B machine, then C machine. Every job should follow the same prescribed order. That is no passing rule. Then the actual or expected processing times on the three machines are known as follows. We are having N jobs. Jobs are 1, 2, 3, 4 up to N jobs. Now machine A, machine B, machine C the processing times will be given for machine a a1 is the time for first job a2 is the time for second job a3 is the time for third job so on an is the job for an is the time for nth job similarly for b machine b1 b2 b3 up to bn machine c c1 c2 c3 up to cn these are the processing times on each machine for each job now our objective is again to find out the optimum sequence of jobs just like the earlier two machine here also for three machine the objective is to find out that sequence where the total elapsed time should be minimum now however the previous method of Johnson can be extended to cover the special case provided when either one or both of the following conditions hold good now there is no specific procedure for solving this three machine and jobs problem. The old procedure given by Johnson and Bellman. This Johnson and Bellman method can also be followed in this three machine problem provided one or both of the conditions are satisfied. So two conditions are there. We have to see whether any one of the conditions is satisfied. It's okay. Or if both the conditions are satisfied is well and good. But if none of the conditions are satisfied, we cannot apply the technique of Johnson. Then in that case, what should happen? Evaluate arbitrary method. Arbitrary method means make a combination of different situations and find out the total lapse time. Whichever case we have lowest total lapse time, that sequence is an optimum. That means trial and error method, time consuming method if the conditions are not satisfied. The first thing we have to check the conditions. If any one of the conditions is satisfied or both the conditions are satisfied, then we can apply the Johnson's method. What are the conditions? The first condition, uh, the smallest processing time on machine A is greater than or equal to the largest processing time on machine B. Now you have to check. The processing times on machine A and the processing time on machine B. The smallest processing time on machine A should be greater than or equal to the largest processing time on machine B. So smallest of A should be compared with the largest of B. The smallest of A should be equal to or greater than the largest of B. This is the first condition. Second condition says the smallest processing time on machine C is greater than or equal to the largest processing time on machine B. We are comparing A with B and C with B. A with B smallest processing time on A should be greater than or equal to largest processing time on B. Right? First condition. If first condition is not satisfied, go ahead with the second condition and check. The second condition says the smallest processing time on C machine 
should be greater than or equal to the largest processing time on machine B. So you can remember like this. Smallest A, largest B, smallest C. That's it. If any one of these two conditions are satisfied or both the conditions are satisfied, then we can proceed the Bellman method. How to proceed here it is given. The method is to replace the problem by an equivalent problem involving n jobs and two machines. If the condition is satisfied, then we have to convert this three machine problem into two machine problem. Equivalent to two machine problem. We have to convert it from three machines to two machines. So how to convert it? We have to make two imaginary machines G and H. G and H are the two imaginary machines. But these G and H are made from ABC. By using ABC only two G and H we are making. How to make G and H here? These two fictitious machines, actually these are not real machines. G and H are the imaginary machines. Not real, genuine machines. Genuine machines are ABC. Now these are two are fictitious machines denoted by G and H and define the corresponding processing time G, I and H, I as follows. So how to find out the processing times for G and H imaginary machines? For G, I is equal to A, I plus B, I. The processing time of A machine and the processing time for B machine add up. A, A1 plus B1, A2 plus B2, A3 plus B3. Like that you combine the processing times of A machine and B machine, you will get the processing time for G. Similarly, H. For H fictitious machine, again you add up the processing time of B and C. First you have added A and B. Now you add up B and C. So B I plus C I. Here B1 plus C1. B2 plus C2, B3 plus C3, like that you add up, go on adding B and C, you will get the processing time for H. Now we have replaced the original three machine problem into equivalent two machine problem. Now forget about A, B and C. Now find out the optimum sequence for the new problem that is N jobs and two machines. Which are the N jobs and two machines? G and H are the now we work out the new problem two machines and jobs with the prescribed order G to H by the method as usual whatever method we have discussed here by Johnson and Bellman same method we follow for finding out the optimum sequence for G and H order is first the work should be done on G then the work will be done on H now the resulting optimum sequence will also be optimum for the original problem of three machine and n jobs. So after solving the problem of G and H machine, we will get an optimum sequence. That optimum sequence can equally apply to the original problem of three machines A, B, C. So simply by converting this three machine to two machine problem, we are finding out the optimum solution. That's it. So once if you listen the lecture with full concentration, then by doing the problems easily you can understand. That is the uh, that is the advantage of watching this theory videos. So two theory videos I have explained you on the sequencing problems. Inshallah, the next video I will start the problems on sequencing.